Hello, my name is Nigel Ward. I'm going to show in this video how to attach a BVH motion capture file to a skin, but I will have a problem that many people experience, and that is that the skin has a T-shape and the motion capture file is based on an armature where the arms were next to the legs, where the arms were parallel and vertical, in other words. This video is based on a video by Ian Scott, but it tries to address that, that problem of the armature shape not matching the skin shape. The basic solution that I believe is best for this is to apply the armature to the skin with the skin in the T-shape, then deform the skin into the shape that we want with the arms by the sides of the, the skin shape then we can apply the armature modifier to make the the skin shape uh, permanent then we can take the armature adjust it again to match the new skin shape and uh, reapply the armature to the skin so first i am deleting the default cube I'm going to open the low poly cocoa blend file from Ian Scott's tutorial site. If you prefer to import the skin into an existing scene, you can do it with exactly that file import instead of file open. We're currently in quad view, which we can toggle on and off with control alt Q. I'm going to bring in the the BVH file straight away with the uh, file import motion capture. We notice the jump kick animation is at 7 frames per second. It was filmed at 30 frames per second, but Ian Scott reduced the number of keyframes to simplify the animation. He reduced the number of keyframes by a factor of 4 so we'll have to take that into account later on. Also the scale should normally be set to about 0.1 otherwise the armature comes in giant size. So here comes the armature and we can see it there and even run it with the Alt A. But before I do so notice that in frame 1 where we are right now the hands of the armature are close to the hips because this is going to be messed up later on. So Alt A shows us that the animation runs much too fast because of the frame rate problem and also we have a lot of dead time there as well. We can solve the frame rate problem by opening up the dope sheet. So I'm changing one of these panels into a dope sheet editor. We have all the keyframes here selected and if we scale the keyframes first we need to set the frame number back to 1 and then we can scale all these keyframes by a factor of 4 to go back to the original frame rate by doing S4. Enter Pressing home gives us a better view of all the keyframes here. I'm going to press A to select none of them. And also we notice the last keyframe is about frame 125. So I'll set the end of the animation to 125. Now when we run the animation with Alt A, we have a more natural looking animation. It actually looks a bit slow and the reason for that is that we now have the uh, frame rate set to 24 frames per second. That's the default in Blender. But like I said, the original frame rate was 30. So that runs a little faster now, I think. And looks okay. I'm going to go out of quad view with Control Alt 
Q so we can see better. I'm going to go into front view, numpad 1, and I'm already in orthographic view here. You may have to press numpad 5 to get that front author view then. I'm going to frame 1, I don't think that matters very much, but the most important thing here now is we're going to match this armature to this skin. So with the armature selected to match the armature to the skin and the armature is still a little large. I'm especially interested in the shoulders here, the shoulder joints as I do this. So that's a good width for the shoulder joints. The shoulder joints are now in place. Before I go any further I shouldn't forget to turn on X axis mirror which you can access here and it's now turned on. That means I only have to work on one side. The changes will automatically be reflected on the other side. I'm also going to make my life easier by connecting certain bones together. So this one and this one for example, the hand and the lower arm, they need to be selected in this order, child first and then parent. Control P and connect, lower arm, upper arm, control P, connect, upper arm, collarbone, control P, connect, the same on the other side. That's not automatic. I'm going to connect the head bone to the neck bone in that order lower leg, upper leg. And lastly, the foot bone to the lower leg bone. Next step is to put the bones into the correct position. What I'm about to do, rotating these three bones, by minus 90 degrees. That's what is going to mess up the animation which we have to fix later on. I'm putting the shoulder joint back into place and then adjusting the other bones in the other joints in the in the arm. Here comes the elbow joint and the wrist joint the end of the fingers, the top of the neck going down, the top of the head going up. I'm going to move this a little up. There's a tiny bone there. Moving that up and moving it the top up. Hip bone, probably about here. Knee joint, maybe here. Ankle. And the end of the foot bone. That doesn't look too bad, but we also need to make sure the bones are correctly placed in top view and we can see that some of them are not. These bones, one, two, three, four, all need to be moved in the green or Y direction. Now we should have all the bones correctly placed. And that means we are ready to connect the armature to the skin. To do that I will go to object mode, select the skin, shift right click the armature to select that, control P and automatic weights. 
if we were to run the animation now with Alt A, you may think the animation is running correctly, but if we pause this, or if we pay great attention and go back to the first frame, we can see that's not a natural pose and it's totally different from what it should be because we saw earlier on the first pose has the hands near the hips and that's been messed up by the rotation of the arms that we had to do. So the trick now is to adjust the pose of the armature so that the arms are close to the legs and then we will make that deformation of the skin permanent by applying the armature modifier. So I'm in frame 1, I am going to select the armature and again go to pose mode, select all bones, A, and clear the location and rotation values. Because we linked the armature and the skin, it should be possible to rotate this arm, R, put the arm close to the leg but not touching, same on the other side, and now the trick is to make this skin deformation permanent. The skin has a modifier currently, and the modifier is an armature modifier, and if we apply that to the skin, then the skin will take the new shape permanently. So that's now done. So now that the skin has the correct shape with the arms at the sides, we can take our armature that we had to distort earlier on by raising the arms and we can make it match the new skin. So we're going to go back to the edit mode for the armature. I'm going to take these three bones and try to make them match the new skin shape by rotating and moving. And that's good enough. If we look at the pose now, we can see that got messed up. So I'm going to select all the bones again and clear the rotation values that we gave them. Now the pose is looking good, edit mode is looking good, and we have the armature matching the skin with arms close to the sides, exactly what we wanted. The armature has the original shape that it wanted, which is arms to the sides, because that's how the original BVH file was made. And the last thing we have to do is to reconnect the armature to the skin, as we did before. Select the skin, shift right click the armature to select that, Control p and as we did before, we're going to connect them with automatic weights. So the armature has the shape that was used to make the original BVH file. The skin has been deformed so that the arms are close to the sides, matching the shape of the armature. And hopefully now, if we run the animation, we should see it running correctly. That is to say, with the hands close to the hips in the first frame. Alt-A should run the animation, and if we slow this down a little, or pause the animation and go to the first frame, 
we see that the hands are close to the hips, which is exactly what we wanted. So we've solved the problem by doing the three basic steps. That is, we distorted the armature to match the T-shaped skin. We applied the armature to the skin. We reposed the character so that the arms were close to the legs. We applied the armature modifier to the skin at that point, making the skin shape more permanent. We adjusted the armature to match the new skin shape and we reconnected the armature to the skin. This is now ready for saving. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.